Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth broadcast. Uh, this broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio listeners, you have an opportunity at any point in time during this radio broadcast to pick up your phones, dial the telephone number 281-837-2222 with any Bible questions or comments that you might have, and we will address your questions and listen to your comments live over the air during this half-hour broadcast. This broadcast is being sponsored by members of uh, Goose Creek Church of Christ, located in Baytown, 4211 North Main Street. will be having their gospel meeting, their first gospel meeting for the year 2015, beginning April the 5th through the 8th. That's this coming Sunday, Lord's Will. Uh, at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., we will begin our gospel meeting at 4211. Our subject this afternoon, False Religions Recorded in the Bible. False Religions that are recorded in the Bible. Now the number for you to call with any question or comment you might have during this half hour broadcast is 281-837-2222. The lines are open and we are ready to receive any questions, listen to your comments that you might have. False religions that are recorded in the Bible. The Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 beginning at verse 1, he writes to Christians, Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I might present you a chaste virgin to Christ. He says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the servant beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He says, For if he, verse 4, that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, Paul says, you might well, he says, bear with him. Now, we're going to deal with the subject of false religions that are recorded in the Bible, and at this time, I'm going to toss it to our brother Javier Frias, who will give us a running start on our subject matter this afternoon. Brother Javier. Thank you, Brother Henry. Now, audience, you know throughout the scriptures and the gospels that Jesus Christ himself said, In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. He said, In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that today we have a numerous amount of religions that are in the world. And you ask the question, why don't the Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, and the Catholic, why don't they unite under one roof and worship the God of Heaven together? Why don't they put their differences aside and just worship God together under one roof? And the idea is, audience, that they have different types of doctrine. Mm -hmm. Amen. They have doctrines that conflict each other. That's why the Mormons and the Baptists will never unite under one roof on Sunday to worship and this is nothing new throughout the Old Testament and throughout the New Testament. <clears throat> there have been many religions that have been invented by men, audience. Many religions that go against the words of God and they've added or subtracted from Moses to David to Solomon. Even in New Testament, Testament Christianity, there was a numerous amount of religions. If we look at Acts chapter 5, this is something we dealt with uh, last week concerning the synagogue of the libertines mm -hmm. and this is a group that Stephen which was a Christian was debating and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake so the libertines were a group of Jews now in, back in this time frame the Jews were supposed to be God's people before Jesus died on a cross and the idea is that these libertines have separated themselves from the original Jews because they used to be slaves in Rome by Rome, they were released from slavery, and they, because they were released from slavery, they decided to create their own religion and call themselves libertines. And they've added and subtracted to the law of Moses, even as the Pharisees and Sadducees has subtracted to the law of Moses. Even if, when you read Matthew chapter 23, audience, Matthew chapter, chapter 23 shows an image of the Pharisees and their doctrine that they taught. And many individuals in the Jewish realm, they believe the Pharisees. 
they believe their doctrine. But when you take another look at Matthew chapter 23, you see the different details that Christ marks with that false religion. And the idea is that just because it's popular mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's accepted by Christ. Amen. And a lot of the Jews believed what the Pharisees were teaching as to be true. But just because they've accepted it doesn't mean that God accepted it because Christ rebuked them and called them hypocrites. And these libertines in Acts chapter 5 were debating against Stephen, but the idea is that they were not speaking the truth according to the righteousness of Christ and what he brought in the New Covenant. I want to take another look at other religions in the New Testament, and these brothers are also going to help us out with the Old Covenant, and how these religions got started, what they taught, and ask yourself this question, does your doctrine, your teaching match perfectly the doctrine and the teaching that the New Testament churches taught? Because all the churches in the New Covenant, they taught the same type of doctrine. We look at uh, Acts chapter 17, looking at verse, uh, looking at verse, look at number 17, Acts 17, 17. Verse 16 says, Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was disturbed in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily, market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, What will this battle to say? Others some, He seemed to be a set of forth of strange gods. Because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. So he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Now the idea is that the resurrection has still not come forth yet. In the time frame that Paul was alive, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection. Another religious group called the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. Later we'll, later we'll read about Hamanus and Philetus who taught that the resurrection has already came. So all these individuals had a different mindset concerning the resurrection. Now, mind you, this is just one doctrine dealing with the resurrection. Now, let's keep reading. And verse 19, And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speak is, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what, things, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there, spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Verse 22, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your deep devotions, I found, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Now they had this image that had this description to the unknown God, but they had other gods also that were there hmm. with them at this time. The mindset of the Athenians were to, to just tell or to hear something new. Tell or to hear something new. And that's the dangerous part about many individuals listening to my voice today is that you have to take heed if that's something new that you hear or something new that you want to tell, a new idea that you come up with. You have to make sure that it's in line with all the commandments of Christ. Man. Because if you come up with an idea, you know, pitch pipe, call a man reverend, tithing, all these ideas, you have to make sure that they're in line with the commandments of the new covenant because like when Jesus said, he said, you worship me in vain. In vain do you worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Amen. And the idea is that, why would you want to spend your life in vain year after year, get old, die, and then go to hell because you didn't do the research? You didn't do the research or take the time to investigate if what you're teaching, what you're doing, what your pastor is doing, the elder, the deacons, if it's, if it's in the Word of God or if it's man-made. And mind you, audience, that the judgment will be individual. You're not going to be there with your parents, with your pastor, with your preacher. It's going to be individual. You're going to be separated from this body. And on earth, some men, they desire to not decline from false teaching. One of the reasons why they don't want to decline is because they receive a certain honor of men, a certain praise, a certain acceptance. You know, people want to be accepted. But the idea is, what's the point or what's the honor of being accepted by men, but being rejected by Christ at the judgment? Amen. You know, and not living forever with him 
So the idea is that your mindset has to be changed in this. And I want to look at another chapter here. Look at it, Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, verse 24. This is another God that the Ephesians worship. And what Brother Henry read concerning a different Jesus. And this is a different Jesus Christ that is presented in the world in these different denominations. Look at verse 24. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. So he made a lot of money. Whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world Worship it. So mind you, in this time frame, I know most of you have not even heard of the, the Queen Diana, the Goddess Diana. And, but in this time frame, Goddess Diana was very popular. She was throughout all the whole world. And the idea is that Paul's teaching of Christianity, of what the commandments that Christ gave, was knocking down the belief in Goddess Diana. Was knocking down the belief of being worshiping something that's made with hands. So the idea is that these men desired to stop Paul because he was teaching truth. Amen. And so here's another thing that's made by men concerning the Church of Christ when we teach. The books that Joel Osteen writes. The books that Joel Osteen writes, those are words and instructions that the Holy Spirit did not inspire him to write. In other words, his words are vain and they make you vain. They make you that empty to not prepare yourself for the judgment. They give Amen. you no life. Amen. In other words, they give no order and instructions to do the will of God and to keep the commandments of God to prepare yourself for heaven. Amen. So they just, all they do is blind you. I want to keep reading that verse, uh, looking at verse 28. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself unto the theater. Some therefore cry one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. So, the idea is these individuals were confused. They just want to be accepted, be a part of a clique, be a part of a group that would love them and accept them. You know, but the idea is that prove the scriptures. Search the scriptures to see if what you are participating in is a part of God's word or is man-made. Because if you can't prove with the scriptures, maybe some individuals, they don't like to get in those type of debates or discussions. Maybe they're fearful. Maybe they just don't like to have that certain type of setting where you have a Bible study where you get corrected or rebuked or admonished. But the idea is that if you don't get corrected in this lifetime and if you don't walk according to truth, the truth that Christ died for, the truth that Christ established, then you're going to spend your eternity in hell. You know, this past week I've heard of so many deaths that have occurred and these individuals they not obey the commandment of God of being born again of water and spirit mm -hmm. to prepare themselves for the judgment. And the idea is that one day you have to leave this earth. Yes. You know, your skin is going to return to dust, even as ours is also going to return if Christ does not return. Yes. And we have to stand for the judge individually. I want to read this last verse before I let the brothers take over. Look at verse 16, uh, 2, Tim 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16. It says, But shem profane and vain babblings, for they will increase into more ungodliness, and their word will eat at the canker, of whom is Hamanias and Philetus. So their false lies will eat like cancer. Verse 18, who concern the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. So these two men, Hamanias and Philetus, were teaching that the resurrection came already. And the idea is that Christ's resurrection came. There were some resurrected when Christ died. 
But the idea is that the resurrection, the end, has not come yet. Amen. Now, the Pharisees was a false group. They believed something concerning the resurrection, but they not, did not keep the whole commandments of Moses. That's, therefore, it made them false. So you can't be partial with the word of God. The Sadducees, they did not believe in the resurrection. They did not believe in angels. But the scriptures talk about the angels from the Old to the New Testament. Amen. So the idea is that what we're asking at this time is to take heed, to search the scriptures daily, whether those things are so, concerning any subject that you come across and prove it and see if the answer is in the Bible. Because if you spend your whole life in vain and you're living in a lie every day, then at the judgment you won't be accepted. The number to call is two. Thank you, Javier. Thank you, Man. Brother Henry. Good job. job well Amen. done. Amen. I want to point out... Uh, if you notice in Acts chapter number 14, you see the word Jupiter. Now, let's take a look at this and see what we can find out about this individual. When these men heard Paul and them teach, they named Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul was called Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest, notice they have a priest. This is an organized religion. The priest of Jupiter, which was before their city brought oxen and garlands unto the gate and would have done sacrifice with the people. Now they bring oxen too. At this time, God's people are bringing oxen. This is a false religion though because as Javier and Henry has taught, they have decided to make up a way to worship what they deem is God. Amen. Just as some of us do today. And so he says in verse 14, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people. Now notice this, they didn't accept, they did not accept the thought of being worshipped or to be called the gods that are in the flesh. At this time what you see happening is they are being labeled like Christ as the gods have come down among them. And so we've got a call right now. We're going to stop for a moment and take this call. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Doing fine. Doing fine. Yes, yeah. Well, let me deal with the first part of your, your question, because one thing I want to make sure we understand, and everybody listening to the program, is the Bible can be understood. I want to make sure. Yeah. Ephesians 3, 4, Paul says, whereby, I'm going to read it real quick. Now, see, because they got some people, well, we just can't understand the Bible life. You got even people out there say, well, we got to agree to disagree. There is no unity in agreeing to disagree. Amen. We cannot be unified to false doctrine. There is one teaching, one belief, one truth that all must obey if he or she plans to go to heaven. What is the truth? Where do we find the truth? The truth is God's word. Where do we get the truth? We read it from what Paul and the apostles uh, what they wrote, rather, uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 4, starting verse 3, he said, How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote a few in four word, a few words. Whereby, Ephesians 3, 4, when you read, Paul says, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy Paul and prophets by the Spirit. And so all an individual has to do is have a sincere heart, uh, uh, believe that the Bible is the Word of God, and he or she can have their soul saved. But let me say this. The reason why, to answer your question, that uh, many do not 
receive the truth or obey the truth is because they don't want to. And because of their lack of uh, and desire to want to know the truth, Paul writes to the saints in Thessalonica and says this, God will give them over to believe a lie. Right. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 10, Paul says this, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth. There's some people who just don't love the truth, my friend. They can care less about it. They're going to follow Amen. what mama said, what daddy said. This is how I was raised. This is just how I believe. No Bible to support it. I was raised a Baptist. I'm going to die a Baptist. I was raised a Catholic. I'm going to die a Catholic. That's what my grandma was. And so you have to, and I have to love the truth. But he said that they might be saved. And so when you love the truth, and people who do love the truth, they will see the truth and they will obey it. That's right. But if they don't, look what the Bible says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 11. And for this cause, because they don't love the truth, God shall send them strong delusion mm -hmm. that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. And so we just got to understand something. Jesus has already said that there's going to be many who are going to be lost and few who are going to be saved. And so that's where we stand in that area, in that arena. There are just some people out there who just do not want to study, don't want to, as the Bereans did in Acts 17, 11, they don't want to search the scriptures, whether or not Amen. the things that we're even saying on this program are so. They call in with their opinion, their thoughts, their belief. Let me tell you something, your opinion, nor ours, our th your thoughts, nor ours, they don't mean nothing when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. What matters is this book that you and I are reading from which will be open on the day of judgment, which we will be judged by. That's the only thing that matters. The numbers 281-837-2222. Brother Javier? Amen. You know, for the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Acts 28, verse 27. And the idea is that these individuals who come up with other Gospels, you know, I talked to two Mormon ladies uh, a few days ago. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into great, the grace of Christ into another Gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the Gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other Gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let it be accursed. Well, Javier, can Amen. I ask you a question about that just real quick? Hold yes. your thought. When Paul wrote that, was the Mormon church in existence? It was not in existence, no, sir. And I believe the Mormon church doctrine is that there was an angel that talked to this man by the name of Joseph Smith and That's told right. him where some plates were and gave what their Bible called a new revelation. That's their writing. Is that right? That's correct. And, he, and the scripture says, let him be accursed. And he says it again, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, it says, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if yet I seek to please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. And these young Mormon girls who I spoke with, I gave them the proof of the scriptures. And some of their brethren, one of them guy's name is Strong, I told the young ladies that I spoke to one of your members before, and he had Elder on his shirt, and I asked him, according to the scriptures, the qualifications of an elder was he had to be married and have children. I asked him, was this young married? Did he have children? And she said, no. He, you know, he was a very young man. And so I told her concerning that doctrine, that's one point where they have gone and erred and added to the word of God and set up an ordinance for this young man to be an elder when the scriptures has no definitions like that That's written. Right. You know, and all they have to do as they read the answer, when they read the answer of their error, don't, don't skip over it and act like you didn't hear it. You have to look at it and, and truly believe it and ask yeah. a question about it Good point. and discuss it and not just skip over it. And that's what a lot of false religions do is they try to ignore it, not pay attention to it. I don't want to argue is what they say. I don't want to discuss it. You know, I don't want to debate, stuff like that. But this is dealing with the soul. Amen. Looking at 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, it says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not Amen. in us. Amen. So these, these individuals, these Mormons, you know, these, uh, all these Baptists, these Catholics, what they have to do is they have to confess 
to their sin, confess the erroneous right. uh, religion that they've embarked upon, and then Christ shall heal them. He'll give them understanding so that they may be saved. But unless they confess, unless they confess, they'll remain blinded and they'll, relieve, they'll remain deceived by their own understanding and the sin will remain upon them. And at the day of judgment, just like Jesus, when he was on earth, he said, if you die in your sins where I am, you cannot come. That's right. So it's not about us. We're not trying to preach ourselves. We're not seeking for popularity. We don't want any money. What we're teaching is the truth so souls could be free from damnation. Man. You know, even as all three of us here on this panel used to be a part of a false religion. Man. I was a Catholic. Brother Ozan was a Catholic. Brother Henry Baptist, was a Baptist, uh, Lakewood Church. So, and we searched the scriptures and, you know, God opened our understanding to see it. And we were baptized and we were saved. Amen. Brother Ozan, do you have anything? Well, I just want to point out uh, the, the wrap up Acts chapter 14. If you notice, verse 11 says, And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of the uh, Lyconia, The gods are come down to us in, he says, likeness of men. So remember that. You can't just start a false religion. Amen. Thank you. For 1 Kings 11, yeah. it says in verse 33, Because they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess, has a woman god of the Zidonians. Now you notice that was Jezebel. She was a uh, Zidonian. Yeah, I'm not sure mistaken. No, now you, now right. you see, it's no problem for her huh. to run nothing mm -hmm. because her people worship a woman god. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's, see, that's why you don't, you know, you, you have to use cautious. You gonna marry a woman who is not of the same belief as Christianity, mm -hmm. because she don't have a problem stepping on nothing God and said. <laughs> said, you know, and then uh, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Mm -hmm. See, that's about Solomon. See, we can talk about that. Now, that's a Christian, yeah. I mean, that's a believer who has began to walk according to these ways. So Solomon was literally learning the doctrine. Remember, he was a very wise man, so he could pick up stuff easy. Learning the doctrine of the Zidonians. He loved those strange wild women, you know, wild meaning wild religious. They may have been the best wife a man could have as far as being faithful and, and, and serving a husband, but they were not beneficial to the male, uh, in this case, uh, any male, definitely in this case, uh, Solomon, because she's supposed to be a help me. She's supposed to help her husband to understand God. She's not to fight him and show him a different God. And that's what a person has to understand.